Well, my name's Will Walker, and I'm the head of business development at CrowdTrade, and this is our uh, VIP resource mastermind in blockchain and cryptocurrency. And we're expecting this to be an ongoing series uh, at least uh, twice a month as we launch many uh, new projects, operators, bring investors to the table. We have over 45,000 accredited investors in our database at CrowdCreate and over 15,000 family offices. So we have a lot of resources and, you know, in venture funds and uh, angel groups and lots of things that we can invite into these masterminds and uh, in these uh, webinars and really connect uh, not only capital sources, but thought leaders like yourselves with each other to talk about your current projects and, and things that you're looking for and really help uh, facilitate the growth that we're all uh, expecting and starting to see right now in the blockchain and cryptocurrency arena. So, you know, I know everybody is uh, seeing what's going on with pay the big announcement now in PayPal. Uh, we've had SoFi. In fact, I'm going to have one. Dave Kuntz is going to be joining us. He's an investment banker that has worked with the founders of SoFi, uh, which was one of the first big financial institutions to announce that they were going to be offering cryptocurrencies. Uh, now PayPal has fo followed. Of course, there was always Square and others. And you can see all of these major um, institutions that are joining the the uh, parade, I guess you'd say, in both cryptocurrency and blockchain. And of course, the banks, the major banks are languishing, you know, the Bank of America's, the JP Morgan's and, you know, uh, Wells Fargo, all of those. So it's really only a question of time, I think, before we're joined by a number of, of credit card, major credit card, worldwide credit card companies like American Express and MasterCard. That's probably going to be the next shoe to drop that will join the parade uh, by offering and really onboard, helping to onboard millions and millions, tens of millions of users into the space and also to the ledger of uh, blockchain. So with that, all that being said and all that exciting adoption and, and things going ha happening in the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency, I'm going to turn it back to Adele and he'll do a quick intro of himself and then hopefully we get a word or two from Jeff and get started. Hi guys, my name is Adil. I'm a business development uh, for CrowdCreate. I work under Will Walker. I really appreciate all of you guys joining in. There's so much knowledge in blockchain that you guys all have. I'm just, have, I'm just blessed that you guys are all here. I also want to turn it back to Jeff Free, our co-founder, to have a few words before we get started. <clears throat> Great. Hey everyone, Jeff, and uh, I know you received this uh, email from Adil and just out of the blue and just, you know, just introduce the purpose of this mastermind it's really to bring together thought leaders like all of you. Just kind of introduce what you're working on, you know, share whatever you're excited about in the industry and see how we can all be a resource. You know, we come from this mindset that uh, of the wisdom of the crowds that, you know, uh, together we are smarter than, than any single, you know, thought leader. Uh, and so really uh, all this is just coming together, seeing how we can all be of value to each other. And now that things have gone virtual, you know, the conferences that we used to all attend as, you know, uh, in blockchain and crypto are no longer there. And this is just another means for all of us just to connect, keep the community thriving and just be a resource. So grateful and thankful uh, for everybody that's uh, attending. Great, Jeff. Thanks. Well, Adele, let's uh, let's move from left to right here. And uh, if that so, works for you and Vinay. Um, Vinay. You know, Vinay We'll go, go first because he has he has a green screen on his back. So let's start off with him. Yeah. So <laughs> hey, tell us what your work, what your project is about, and what you're working on, and what we could possibly help with. Sure. Um. So, uh, I started out as the release coordinator for Ethereum. So part of that project since 2014, uh, and what I've been building really since then, uh, first at the, at the foundation, then at Consensus, and now independently is a series of legal on-ramps for building digital identities for physical assets. So the sort of idea is that you can take an asset, you can build it a legal identity, you can put that on chain, and then that enables you to buy it, sell it, collateralize it, securitize it, and all the rest of these fundamental operators. Um, but we don't do the downrange stuff. We don't do the securitization of the collateralization. What we're focused on is basically almost like a 
almost like what DNS did for information, we're doing for physical assets. Um, first kind of high profile customer is William Shatner. So we're doing a bunch of the Shatner memorabilia. Wow. Um, and uh, next project after that is numbered gold bars. Excellent. Excellent. Um, How long lots of anti-counterfeit in... and stuff, you know, just a, just a real smorgasbord. Yeah. How long have you been in business and how long did it take you to develop this and, and get from A to where you are now, uh, Vinay, and then tell us what else you, what, what you were looking to, what we can help with as sure. well. Um, so, I mean, the nutshell is we're, we need a bridge round, right? We're uh, headed for Series A, uh, albeit a kind of strange looking blockchain Series A, but we're headed for Series A. Uh, we raised two and a quarter million dollars over the past three years. Uh, and we're looking for a quarter of a million to half a million uh, to get the first 50 mil of assets into the platform. Uh, and then next year, there's going to be a larger round, possibly equity, uh, structured as a conventional Series A, um, more likely to be a uh, token uh, under the UK utility token regs. And I, I can't resist asking a crowd create qu question as head of business development. How much do you utilize uh, influencers in your outreach or your strategies? Absolutely hard, cold, zero, unless you count Bill Shatner and we're working for him, not the other way around. Um, I mean, I, I'm an old kind of cranky, middle-aged think tank guy. And <laughs> as soon as he, anybody opens their mouth and sounds optimistic, I shoot him in the face. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Because I remember the blockchain before these, you know, vampires arrived, you know, <laughs> like I, I'm back in the day when it's just, you know, nerds in bars roaring at each other about how amazing Bitcoin will be. So, no, yeah. I hate those people. No, I, I hear you. I hear you, Vinay. I'm, I'm old school myself. So it was a breath of fresh air to hear you say that, even though some are certainly worth more than others, like anything. And it's a it's a commodity that moves around. And we certainly uh, pinpoint that here at CrowdCreate as well, as well as investors. But thanks for joining. And I know uh, you're going to be a welcome ongoing addition to this series. So moving right along, I think we can move over to Matthew Lemurl. Le Matthew? Oh, well, good to be with you, Will and Adil and everyone else. Uh, I think I'm probably in a separate category because I am a fund of fund manager. So uh, we have the leading blockchain venture fund of funds. We're investors in 20 of the top blockchain VCs, chair the advisory board at Blockchain Capital, but others are blockchain.com, Castle Island, Fabric, uh, One Confirmation, Hashkey, and so on. And through them, we're investors in 200 blockchain companies and projects, wow. including 10 of the top 16 unicorns, uh, Coinbase, Ripple, Circle, and so on. So, um, Wow. So, so joining this, I, I wasn't sure what to expect. Obviously, I'm a fund of fund investor. So, Vinay, I, I'm not normally a direct investor, uh, but obviously, we know the Fabric folks and the 1KX folks and others in London. Hmm. Uh, I'm assuming you're in London. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. And also, we're investors in blockchain.com as well in uh, ventures in London. So, anyhow, and then uh, to your question, Will. Um, do I use influencers? Um, I used to be the head of marketing for Gap back in the 90s. So back then, uh, we put a black T-shirt on uh, Sharon Stone and the whole world saw oh. it. And it sort of kicked off this notion of influencers uh, subtly wearing product. But I've got to admit, I haven't really used this in the context of blockchain. And uh, the, the primary reason is we're an accredited only vehicle. And so there's limited amounts we can say through non-accredited people and to non-accredited communities. Um, yeah. So that makes that a little bit complicated. Um, and obviously the ICO boom and bust and the telegrams of the world are, are very active talking about projects. But as, we've, as we're beginning to discover, that breaks a whole bunch of SEC rules and regulations, which come back to bite you later. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, I'm happy to be here, Will. Uh, I don't know how I can best help for yeah. myself personally. I'm easy to find fifthera.com and blockchaincoinvestors.com. Well, tell, us, tell us your profile. And I will add one thing to that. On the influencer and the investor side, 
we have an amazing uh, data research team that's constantly reviewing the pull uh, of each influencer and also the activity and recent activity and check size. We have about 30 touch points of investors, whether it be institutional or retail. So we really do know their app, their current uh, appetite, run rate, uh, how how well some of their current projects are pulling, so to speak, and and the metrics there are all clearly defined. So we we're in both your worlds to you know you understand it a lot, Matthew, and have certainly been at the forefront of organizing. But we're constantly doing a a real time evaluation of their actual worth pull. And, and making sure that they really are, you know, fulfilling the needs and profile of the, of the client, both on the investor side too, as well as the influencer side. But tell me your profile of your, um, your, your best investor. If you could just poof right now and we could produce, uh, what, what would that profile look like either on the institutional or retail side? For so your Alice, yes, so Alice and I have a, feet in several camps. We have this venture fund of funds, blockchaincoinvestors.com. Um, we're also, um, Alison chairs the advisory board of blockchain capital. We're advisors and investors at Bitwise and at Bitbull. Um, I'm vice chairman SFOX, which is the leading crypto prime dealer and vice chairman of uh, Securitize, the leading tokenization company. Mm -hmm, sure. So we've, uh, and we're investors in DCG and Grayscale and so on. So the ideal investor depends upon what they want um, and what exposures they're looking for. If they, if they want venture, then obviously they can go direct or they can go through the fund of funds. If they're traders, then they need to be in a really good trading environment that gives them an edge on the, you know, the cryptocurrencies and so on that they're trading. And that's a whole different dialogue. And if they're more interested in crypto hedge funds, then we take them down a different path again. So there's something for everyone. I mean, the, the ideal investor is someone who knows what they're looking for, can differentiate between the vehicles and, and knows which vehicle is the right fit for them and is willing to uh, trust the, the managers or the intermediaries that they're working with. Um, and hopefully is in it for the long haul, because I think blockchain and crypto, this, you know, obviously, if you want to make a short term hit, uh, some people are becoming wealthy with offerings and tokens and other things. But this is really about building technology for a digital world. And that's a five to 10 year undertaking. And I think most of these projects will take quite a while to get to the mainstream. And and so uh, we are long-term investors. We're in the five to 10 year time frame ourselves and ideally other investors see this, this technology through that lens. I, I think the get rich quick uh, investor tends to be also the one that gets caught by the, the get rich scam. And we try and avoid all of those things. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, we certainly are impressed with your background and all the projects that you're you're uh, supporting and invested in and certainly welcome here and glad to certainly have you, so. Oh, well, thanks, Will and Adil. Uh, good to be yeah. here. Yeah, no problem. Next up, we got Dean, uh, I, I apologize if I say your name wrong, last name wrong, Dina Rotskind. It, it's Dina Rockhine, or you can say Dina Ellis. I inherited that annoying um, last name from my husband, so <laughs> Ellis is a lot easier. <laughs> So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I, my background and what I do, because it's going to definitely be different than a lot of you. So I currently am at Paul Hastings, um, where I'm in the fintech and payments practice there. Um, but I spent most of my career on Capitol Hill, um, on working on house financial services, Senate banking, and treasury department. And during that time, I was involved in almost every major piece of legislation. Um, you know, you can go back to eSign, which became Law in 2000, which was before eSign. Um, um, everything electronic was not legal, legally binding. And people were really scared to go from paper to electronic. All the way up until my time with Senator Toomey, where I was the lead author of most of the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act. Um, 
And um, so that's a little bit about me. I also was in-house at Chrysler as a lobbyist and was there during their bailout, their second one. I know I'm old, but not their first one. And um, was a lobbyist for Quicken Loans. Um, I think I was asked for my opinion on real estate. So I, I can give you my opinion on real estate and blockchain. Um, I have an 18 year old son who's just um, applying to colleges now and he is applying to be a real estate major, which makes me a little scared because look at all of us. I think we're all at home. Some of you may be in glamorous places, I don't know, but you got the gist. We're not in office buildings. Um, but even though I say that, if you think about um, what's going on with the real estate, the residential real estate market right now, it's extremely hot. Um, and a lot of people are really thinking about, gosh, I'm stuck at home so much, I need a bigger place. And they're moving, moving further out of the urban core. So I think it's really exciting. I think the idea of you know doing a Reg A plus or a tokenization, um, creating more liquidity for real estate is exciting in itself. And then I think the last question I was asked is like, how can I be helped? Um, so what I do is I'm a lobbyist again, and or swamp preaching, government affairs, whatever you want to call it. So I take people to see um, either members of Congress or staff or the principals at the agencies. Um, but where I would say I need the help is, um, it's kind of funny that I worked at a car company, right? Because I don't really know how cars work. I don't really know how TVs work. I don't really know how the internet works. When it comes to blockchain and DLT and new technology, I really don't know how it works. So any kind of education you can give me um, makes it easier for me to do my job on Capitol Hill. Thanks. 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 Thank you for having me. Yeah, no impressive background. And I know, you know, uh, legislation and, and regulators and all the things that go into the mix are all part of the evolution of blockchain and cryptocurrency and, you know, I, I hate to bring up a little thing, but even the sand dollar just got launched by the Bahamas, a little, you know, little country, but kind of the first shot in the salvo of government tokenization, so to speak. China is getting ready. They're testing their digital coin and, and many others. So I know it's going to pull a lot of uh, government, uh, you know, uh, agencies and solutions into the field, as well as uh, things like real estate, you know, we're working on a number of real estate uh, digital projects right now here at CrowdCreate. So welcome to the call. And I'm sure we're all going to learn a lot and make a, a lot of connections with resources. So thanks. Amen. So well, nice work today? on the digital signature legislation. You know, everything we do is built on that legislation. Yeah. The blockchain no, that's field right, rests man. on digital signature legislation. People it's think because, DocuSign was first, but they weren't nearly first. So. No, I, it, I mean, it's kind of interesting, too, because some of the states have passed laws that have been completely unnecessary because e-sign is technology neutral. So it doesn't matter if you put something onto a blockchain or some other type of, I hate to say blockchain because some of them aren't even blockchains anymore. They're, um, they're, there's no block, there's no chain, so or into a DLT. Um, but yeah. So it's obviously exciting times in Washington because elections are next week. Um, who knows? You know, don't ask me what's going to happen because I have no idea. Yeah, we don't. Uh, we don't want to open up that can. We don't want to open up that can yet. So that's great, Dina. But thanks for your your thoughts. And uh, who do we have next, Adil? Well, while we're at the uh, legislation side, we got to go with Clyde. He's part of the New York subcommittee as well. So we might as well go with him next. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, for hosting this, uh, Will and Adil and, uh, and the other everybody else that helped uh, host this uh, this this uh, blockchain mastermind. Welcome to everyone here. Uh, first, I have to start with a disclaimer. I hope uh, and please excuse my New York accent if you can't understand it, uh, but I hail from Queens, New York. <laughs> um, so I am a New York State Assembly member, and I serve as the chairman of the subcommittee of, of Internet and New Technologies. 
Wow. And uh, when we talk about um, regulation in this space, I want to do a 30,000 foot view of regulation and, uh, and uh, the, digit the digital age and technology. We are in a space uh, in America uh, where we have a certain regulators, and Dina can appreciate this, where regulators have a certain relationship with technology, right? What do we do with data, right? Now, you know, what do we do about questions about privacy uh, in light of what Europe has done with privacy, in light of what's going on in California with something called the CCPA? What, do, what ha you know, what, how do we approach, how do we approach these, these questions uh, about antitrust, about monopolies. What are the, what are the relationships between uh, what's going on between federal regulators and big tech? How is big tech responding to, uh, to, uh, to the questions of regulators? If, you, if anybody watched the hearings between uh, you know, the technology company CEOs uh, yes. on the Hill. But looking at, looking at all that, how should we, um, how should, and, and I'm talking as a New York lawmaker and regulator, how should we uh, be, um, how should we view technology? How should we approach uh, the spaces and blockchain in particular where, the, where things are changing at a faster rate than ever before? When I first got elected, we were, you know, I'm from a state where, well, before I get into that, you know, keep in mind when we talk about regulations in particular in, in the blockchain space, most in the United States, most of the regulations have come from the federal agencies, whether it's, uh, whether it's the SEC, the FTC, whether it's the IRS, whether it's FinCEN, um, and even on a New York state, the regu you know, we, we started off, we, we, I guess the first date with a regulation from one of our agencies uh, uh, and it was called term the bit license. What effect did that have on New York? What effect did it have with your companies? And many, and I hear a lot of these companies here with companies or potential companies that are coming to New York or potential investments that came to New York. So I was very concerned about that. I was very concerned about how, uh, also very concerned about you know, what is the proper level of regulations for, for, for digital currency, for blockchain technology uh, in my state and in the country? One of the things that we did do uh, in New York is we passed something called the Digital Currency Blockchain Task Force, where we have, uh, where we appointed a number of people from industry, from academia, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from different backgrounds to be able to help come up with a report to decide to figure out how do we, you know, do we use digital currency, you know, what we call digital currency? How do we use blockchain? Um, what is the proper, what are the proper guardrails uh, to put in place? Um, right. Because what happens is if you don't have that properly, then you have different def definitions of different agencies. So, Will, thank you. I'm here to learn. Uh, learn from you guys and, and to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks, Clyde. I appreciate that intro and on yourself and, and your evolution and, and and what you're finding out. I'm sure that this series is going to be helpful to you, this one and future ones. But I do have one quick question. How much in your estimation is somebody that's kind of, you know, I've been in, in and around this stuff for about eight, nine years. And uh, coming from a private equity background, I gravitated towards it quickly coming from fintech even before that. But how much has COVID uh, heightened or, or uh, uh, sped up your process and your fellow regulators process in making some guardrails or adopting some guardrails? Because that's really, you know, on a lot of our issuers, operators, minds and, and developers. And we really want to do it the right way, but we also have to have a uniformed right way in order to adhere to and explain properly from different levels. Well, listen, I just got to be on, you know, so keep in mind, you know, th thank goodness um, that, uh, you know, COVID has elevated my subcommittee, but it's a subcommittee. Technology should not be a subcommittee, mm. right? And these issues are very, uh, are, you know, are very important. So, you know, one of the things that we have to really figure out is, 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 you know, the importance of these issues 
and and how to, how we how we properly couch to it. But unfortunately, uh, in government, generally speaking, the you know these these issues aren't before the major committees, and the the heads of the major committees are usually people that are more mature. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. we have to be careful about the language that we use, right? We have yeah. to dump down the things and how we speak yeah. about these things. So, so we've been working on trying to get that. That's great. Well, I appreciate that answer and uh, very, I think very honest and very uh, clarifying. So hopefully it continues to move upstream as you would say and, and get the attention because you know, it touches everything, education and everything that the voters, and I know it's always about the votes and the appropriation at the end of the day, uh, these are key issues that, you know, whether it's New York or, or anywhere else in the world right now, it's certainly a, a, a great uh, tool and concept. So thanks for, for being part of our group. Okay, thanks, Adele. I, just for everybody, I'm putting in links to uh, everybody's LinkedIn, also websites to follow along in the Zoom chat. So just everybody can connect with each other after the event. And just uh, if there's anything that sparks of interest or if you can help another person, feel free to reach out. And uh, we'll also be sending, you know, connect, connecting everybody after this mastermind so you can uh, get in touch with the people here. That's great, Jeff. Thank you for adding that. And yeah, we want this to grow. We want this to be, you know, full of resources and thought, thought ideas and, and all sorts of uh, a helpful uh, connecting opinions and education for all of us. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've been in this space, you can always, there's so much to learn. Like I say, we're only in the really the, uh, second inning at best in all of this. So it's really uh, fascinating. And who's next on our hit parade, Adele? I mean, while we're still in legislation and law, we got to go with Harriet Terry. Uh, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, but we got to go with you next. Okay. No problem at all. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you all. Uh, my name's Harriet. I'm a partner at another law firm, Jones Day, based in London. Great to hear some English accents out there. I <laughs> blockchain and digital currencies practice group with responsibility for Europe and Asia Pacific. So until the start of this year, I was spending up to half my year in Singapore, Hong Kong and Australia. Um, if people are interested in talking about some of the changes that are going on here, I'd love to share that. Uh, my introduction to blockchain came in November 2013. So my background is in regulatory compliance, fraud, bribery, corruption, sanctions, anything you can go to prison for, um, lots of FS compliance. And I was asked to speak at an accelerator meeting at level 39 in London to a bunch of startups about the importance of money laundering. They had zero interest in hearing from me, I can tell you, but in the break, I sat next to someone who had a bright pink t-shirt that said, Bitcoin, how dragons pay elves for mining. And we got chatting, he had just resigned from his uh, trading job to become Ethereum's fourth full-time employee. The rest is history. I came back to my firm and I pitched that we should start up our blockchain and digital currencies practice. And about a year later, when the rest of the world had caught up, uh, they agreed with me. So what I particularly focus on is regulatory governance and compliance frameworks for blockchain implementations, particularly in the financial services space obviously a lot of payments, but I really appreciated the shout out for the Bahamas. Um, one of the biggest projects I've been involved in, although it was very low key, was drafting a overarching regulatory and governance framework with a group of countries from the Commonwealth, including the Bahamas, that effectively is now available for any Commonwealth member to sort of pick up and work out how to implement in their own country. The Bahamas active members of that group and is obviously leading the way. You know, if you go and look at that framework, there is nothing that will surprise any of you in there. It, it's fairly basic. There's nothing controversial in it. But for me, the importance is trying to make what could be seen as difficult or complicated concepts. And I think there's this real language around technology that makes it sound complicated. And actually there are comparatively straightforward ways to connect the technology side to the business side, which obviously all of you are doing, a big part of what I try and do is translate that into the regulatory environment, which again is as bad as technology for making it sound more complicated than it is. Um, so really from my perspective, I'm always interested in hearing what other people are doing. I particularly act for investment banks, private equity firms who are interested in making investments in technologies, 
often quite significant investments in startups or accelerated firms and want assurance about risk and governance processes. So that's a big part of what I do day to day. If anyone's interested in talking about what's important to that, happy to do that. The last thing I'll mention very quickly is obviously it's an exciting time in Europe with the publication of the European Commission's MCIA regime for crypto assets. Again, nothing groundbreaking in that overarching regulation. It's very straightforward. But what it does is open up regulated firms who can invest in these assets, use these assets in a completely different way. And so even though we've known that was coming for a year, we're seeing a massive uptick of interest in Europe in digital assets, tokenization, crypto assets. So great to meet you all and, and thank you for having me. Well, Harriet, what a what a performance. I want to just give you a personal <laughs> clap there. Uh, I, I, I'm sure I speak for some other people in the group, but I just want to thank you because even though the Bahamas is a small, uh, you know, 800, but there's a lot of, you know, islands in the chain. I understand there's Pacific Islands and other islands also and other uh, municipalities or sovereign countries that are uh, following that actual framework. Is that, can you comment on that? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, again, as I say, uh, to call it, and an, you know, it's an overarching set of principles, frameworks, but it breaks down into these are all the considerations that you need. And what we're seeing is certainly countries like Singapore, Canada, Australia, whilst they've been very active, they don't really need that overarching framework. Right. They already have it within their existing systems. What they were very interested in was making sure there was connectivity between systems. Mm -hmm. um, smaller countries are looking at it very actively. The Bahamas is probably the most active. There are a couple of others, particularly in the Caribbean, who are looking, so Aruba is one um, that's sort of very focused on that as well. I did say that we should go to the opening and, and have the sort of the, the launch party in the Bahamas, but sadly COVID didn't permit that, but I, I'm oh, hoping. Oh, oh. <laughs> let, let, let me know how I can wangle an invite when you do have it. So I, I'd be there with bells on. I love the Bahamas, but this is great news, so. Thank you for your service. I'll just say that right now, even though you're in the private sector. So welcome aboard. Okay, who else do we have? This has been a great group already, but who well, else do we, we have, Adil? Let's, let's start off with some of the professors we have. We got to go with Jim Sorkin. He has the United, he has the White House logo in the back. So you got to go with him first. Okay. Jim Lu, sorry. Paul Jim, Sorkin, or are you talking Jim, about Paul? Jim or are you talking about <laughs> I'm talking about Jim Lu, sorry. Jim yeah, Lu. Like I, I sorry gotta, about that. You guys are right say, next I to each know, other. I know Paul yeah. Sorkin. I didn't know we had a Tim Sorkin. Right, no exactly. worries. <laughs> hey, Paul, welcome. You made it. So I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you. So tell time. us a, a little bit about what you and your firm do and what you're looking for or working on. That would be great. Uh, Jim, I think you're good. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you want to go first? Yeah, no problem, Jim. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jim Liu. I'm going to show you one little slide because I have to show you what we've done here. And I, I, buy, I have two hats on. One is a Johns Hopkins Business School professor hat. And then the other one, I represent SoCat, which is a small sort of uh, consulting company named after my two daughters, Sophie and Catherine. <laughs> and I just wanna show you what we've done. And in particular, um, we've have, we have taken blockchains into the federal government really early. So I just wanna brag a little bit, but then also tell you where we stumbled or at least had some difficulties. So you guys maybe can help us out. Um, I don't know if you can see this. This is what we've done so far. Um, our company is not that big, but you know we've done a lot of AI. We won some AI challenges at GSA. If you guys are familiar with some of those agencies down in DC, uh, we got some innovation awards for doing um, grant solutions. I don't know if you guys know this, but the federal government gives out about seven hundred billion dollars in grants every year, and um, you know our our team has crunched a lot of numbers. Um, I've worked on Wall Street as a quant, and also um, I was a fund of funds manager. Uh, during the hedge fund days. And the crypto days reminds me a little bit of the, um, the fund of fund days for hedge funds where people are scratching their heads and trying to figure it out, but they know that it's a really interesting diversifier. So, you know, I think that's pretty interesting. But in particular, I just want to highlight one thing that we did in December uh, 2018. According to a uh, Booz Allen Hamilton um, sponsored research of the Data Foundation, they reviewed all the blockchain um, 
sort of deployments across the federal government. And we were the first to deploy something into production. And we did that for uh, grants, federal grants. Basically, it was sharing data. And we did it on um, IBM Hyperledger, right? And so that was a, that was a nice little feather in our cap. Um, from there, um, you know, not much happened. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't pull out the full force of the blockchain. And even to this day, I'm still thinking about it. I know it's really cool. I think it's really interesting. I teach the blockchain class. When I first proposed it, I said, Bitcoins, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains. And I got yelled at. <laughs> the dean yelled at me. He said, no, you can't teach that here in the business school. Because this is at the same time Jamie Dimon was saying that, you know, it's a total yeah. fraud, right? So yeah. anyhow, he said, okay. Eventually, they let me teach it. They said, you just have to call it blockchains. So I taught the first blockchain course. And then after that, they let me put in the word crypto. So now it's called cryptos and blockchains. And hopefully, you know, in a couple more semesters, I'll let me put the word Bitcoin back into it. But uh, students love it. I mean, they're really excited about, you know, this is the cutting edge finance stuff. Intellectually, they're very, very motivated. We had one case study where we're putting medical records from Harry uh, College uh, onto the blockchain. Basically, they get an 18-wheeler truck and they put their um, dental students on there and they have to go into the community and they have to take sort of records. And we had a, a, a group of students uh, come up with an idea where they would put those medical uh, records onto the blockchain. And so that was really interesting. They went down to DC, they presented it and then everyone was really excited. Um, you know, one of the things I'm working on right now with some engineers is we wanna use the mobile phone. We wanna do banking services, very similar to what we've heard, but we wanna do it, you know, to, in terms of being very, um, working hand in hand with regulators because we're down here sort of in Baltimore, DC. And we wanna do everything by the book, right? And, you know, what are the best practices how do we sort of identify ourselves? How do we stay really far away from, you know, any kind of, um, you know, dangers that exist out there that a lot of the regulators talk about? The other thing is, you know, um, if you guys are ever in Baltimore, DC, let me know. Uh, maybe you can come and speak at one of my classes if I'm teaching blockchains or cryptos. I teach a wealth management class right now, and I'm going to definitely talk about how cryptos are diversifiers. And you know, I'm you know, I'm watching the industry grow. And one of the things I still sort of am waiting to figure out, and like you guys said before, I think we're still in the early innings, but you know, as soon as the regulators, and this goes to where's our regulators, as soon as they let, lay down some really clear rules, I think this thing will take off. And one of the catalysts is, unfortunately, I think we're playing a little bit of a catch up, right? Yeah. I mean, Asia is way, way advanced, way ahead. Stuff, right? And you know the U.S. doesn't want to lose out on the blockchain or the AI or these things. So I think this this is where we're going to see where we're going to get um, some pretty good regulations laid out. I think that's what I'm hoping for. And um, so I think we're we have a chance this year, right? Yeah. Um, but we'll see. But thanks yeah. a lot for letting uh, me join. I'm really interested in meeting you guys and learning more from you. Great, Jim. Well, Jim, you, you hit on a couple of quick points. And the one point that I made also in the early, besides the early innings was COVID is, has sped everything up. And of course, into a cashless society for many reasons. Uh, you know, now I'm sure they're letting you put cryptocurrency and pretty soon Bitcoin, uh, along with some of these government, uh, sovereign government uh, digital coins that are coming to light, just like Harriet talked about. I mean, it's a it's a parade. I call it a parade of, of uh, you know, uh, good clarified subjects that can really make a difference. And once again, some of it is just sitting at a cashless society when things need to be distributed. Look at everybody's waiting for the next uh, bailout or the next uh, uh, you know uh, term to get you know PPE money or whatever. And it takes so long to get distributed. Half the time, it doesn't go to the right people. And certainly, it go doesn't go fast enough. So you guys see that? My block card. I got yeah, my I Coinbase. Do. I got some Bitcoins on this thing. And now I'm going to actually go buy something and eat it. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, good. I, it's, it's, it's getting near Christmas. So I'll put in my uh, order early for you. But anyway, thank you, Jim. And now let's go. So Will, and Will, let's we got, go to we, Paul. 
We got to go with Paul Sorkin next. Paul Sorkin. Uh, Paul, yeah. thanks for being so patient and glad you're here and take it away. Yeah, of course. So uh, I guess I have a slightly different background, it sounds like, compared to some of these other people. A very impressive group you put together here. Um, I am a, an attorney, investor, entrepreneur, consultant, wearing a lot of different hats. So as a serial entrepreneur, I've um, been involved in dozens of different companies from the ground up for the last few decades. And as an attorney, I've seen all different angles of the business and the financial side and legal side. So although I have existing businesses still, um, now our main focus has been, I started two groups called Perfect Balance Investments and Perfect Balance Consulting. And we're kind of like the Shark Tank meets the profit where we have a group of active angel investors that want to be involved in projects, not just financially, but where we can add value, strategic, you know, opportunities, not just ourselves, but a team of people to where if you want, you know, like a crowd create type of thing to help you fundraise, or you want a branding specialist or a sales specialist, kind of, you know, are building all these different, you know, spokes to the wheel, so to speak, that whether they're actually with our group investing or we're doing like third party partnerships, we're finding that if you have two widget companies that do the identical thing, that if one has strategic partners, investors, and resources, and the other doesn't, they're going to be a hundred times more successful. So, you know, we've been investing in a lot of different things and part of perfect balance, as you can imagine, you have your tech plays and you have your real estate plays, you have your dividends and you have your risky. Well, we did some blockchain. Um, a few years back, we were mining Ethereum uh when it was at 1400 we were happy when it went to 200 we turned them off um we've turned them back on and now we're actually trying to uh reconfigure with some uh third-party server networks that have lower electricity cost and can mine other things besides what we were mining and so we've kind of consolidated resources and one thing i started back in the day we never really executed unfortunately is i started a company called the crypto tank it was going to be the shark tank for crypto and we started doing the mining and trading and a few things. We never really raised a lot of money or did much because we were, were opportunists like everyone. And, you know, the roller coaster ride was it was hard to find um, any type of reasonable valuation and any type of reasonable investments. So we are actively looking for things that are more established that we feel we can now help maybe scale or grow or we can have strategic relationships with. Um, you know, we're, we're at a stage, I think, where we're, we're risk takers, but we try to have calculated risk. So, you know, we, we want to get to a point where we say like, okay, it looks like this company has proven that they have a, a solution where they're solving the problem better than someone else. Their differentiator has somewhat of a moat and that now they're looking to scale and grow with strategic relationships and resources. And, you know, that's part of where, you know, on my LinkedIn, I definitely will connect with everyone. You know, I've got over 10,000 people on LinkedIn because I feel like if I can't help someone today, I might be able to help in the future. And if I can make an introduction and karma comes back and it's going to help all of us in the long run, I'd like to see everyone be successful. And I think it helps all of us. So if I can't help you today, hopefully we can help each other in the future. And nice to meet everybody. Well, that's great, Paul. Thank you. And welcome Always a good addition, very entrepreneurial, and uh, he and his firm are, are very, uh, very adaptable and uh, educational as well. So it's a great resource for all of us. So Thank thanks, you. Paul. Thank you. Okay, Adele, who else have we got? We, we got to go with the next professor, Jamil Sik, a professor at Columbia. Okay, wow, we're getting a lot of, a lot of <laughs> educators here that are high, high, high level. So welcome, Jamil. Hi guys, um, thanks Adil for the invitation. Um, happy to meet everybody here. Um, so I, what I do, I run a company called Chain House. We're based in New York City. Uh, we do a mix of products and services. On the service side, we focus uh, predominantly on education, uh, software development, um, and then on the product side, we're building for different software platforms, uh, two of which are in the blockchain, blockchain space. Uh, one is um, related to disbursements of capital, and we're working with the World Bank on that. Uh, and the other is um, uh, uh, kind of hush-hush right now, but is in the digital security space, uh, similar to Securitize. Um, and then we're doing, we're building some stuff uh, for real estate um, and uh, fitness that's not related to blockchain. Um, I run uh, a, a large meetup group in New York City, the largest blockchain meetup group. 
Uh, mm -hmm. we, do, we did a lot of classes in New York City. Uh, we had probably the most popular events. We did about 30 events a year. Um, I just finished publishing a book on the core of blockchain, just came out actually last week uh, with O'Reilly. Um, I'm going to be doing two more books uh, over the next year, uh, one on crowdfunding uh, and the other one would be on, on DeFi. Uh, I teach at Columbia Business School. I teach blockchain and AI. Uh, I also teach at CUNY and NYU. I teach machine learning um, and data science uh, respectively in those schools. Uh, I'm broadly, I've uh, been involved in blockchain for the past couple of years, started mining originally on my laptop in 2012, mm -hmm. uh, um, played around with it, uh, and started to dig in on the technology side of it. Uh, really looking forward to um, networking with everybody here. Uh, I think we're, we've got some, some fantastic people here. And, and just in the interest of time, I'm going to keep my bio short. Well, Jamel, that's really impressive uh, on several levels, but I want to ask, is there any way that an outsider like myself and some of the group here could could somehow uh, tune in to some of your meetups or, um, you know, some of your blockchain meetings that you have, meetup group or something? Is there any way to have uh, some outside communication or connection there because it'd be great to see what such a nucleus is in, in, in the middle of, of COVID and lots of, you know, pull and push and everything else, what's going on in your, even your meetup group or some of your classes. Sure. I mean, so the meetup group is public. I will pass the information to Adel. Hopefully you can pass that around. Uh, so the meetup group is public. Uh, I think we're now about 6,000 people in New York city. Wow. Um, and so, um, in, in terms of like um, your, this, the question that you brought up in terms of an influencer, that meetup group is very influential in New York City. We help make a lot of companies popular that were not really well known uh, just by setting up and announcing um, information sessions and things like that. This is especially back um, before COVID. Uh, and so having that uh, power and that uh, responsibility, we used it very, very carefully. We avoided uh, letting anybody come up there and pitch uh, co tokens and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, we made sure that everything was educational. That's great. Uh, yeah. And the great thing about the community and the networking that we get out of it is it informs our business around what products we want to create and what products we don't want to create. Uh, in the blockchain space, you have to be very, very sensitive around mm -hmm. uh, what really will work and what really is, you know, just a, a bunch of um, just talk and hype. Love. And so that information has um, a pipe back into, into our engineering team mm -hmm. and then figure out like, if this is the kind of product so that we want to build. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, I'll, I'll personally be there with bells on. So I appreciate the intro or the invite uh, to, to monitor, you know, the goings on there. I think that's a very nerve center number one for lots of activity. That's Absolutely. credible and educational which is the best value we can get, right? So. Jamil, is there anything that we can help you out with specifically? And like, what are you most excited about and working on in the space? And Well, I think the way that capital is, you know, people raise capital is going to change and it is changing. Um, and so that, I think that's a conversation that maybe we can have around, um, I just saw just now posting from the Algorand blockchain, somebody just created an app on how to do crowdfunding uh, the, these block, uh, the Algorand blockchain. I think that's going to continue to change and evolve. Um, and I think that's an area that we can potentially have conversations around. That's good. You have attorneys here. The SEC raised the limit for, um, you know, uh, the reg CF to 5 million. And also yeah. they also announced that uh, these uh, unlicensed finders can also help uh, raise funds. So it's- Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Thing. Yeah, that's great news. Great. Yeah, the million dollar limit before was was very- I think it was very tight for a lot of companies because they spent a lot of money on, I'm trying to get that million dollars uh, and that 5 million makes sense. I think it's opened up some interesting opportunities. Sounds good. Well, Thank great. You. We look forward to a lot of participation with you. So thanks for, for joining. Uh, who do we have next, uh, Adele? We're gonna go with the next author in line, Tom Wheelwright. Okay, Mr. Wheelwright, where are you? I am right here, thanks there so much. There you are, hey Tom. Um, you? Thank you. Yeah, I am uh, author of Tax-Free Wealth. I'm uh, um, uh, advisor to Robert Kiyosaki of the Rich Dad Poor Dad fame um, in taxes and wealth strategy. I'm the founder of uh, WealthAbility, which is a company that um, does financial education for um, business owners and investors. 
and we have we have we have uh, developed and are developing an international network of boutique small CPA firms. About eighty percent of CPAs and chartered accounts around the world are in um, firms of twenty or less, and that is our target market. We don't care about the other twenty percent. We'll take the eighty percent. Um, but we're we are um, seeing blockchain as a major impact in the CPA profession. Um, both from a financial standpoint, um, financial statement standpoint, bookkeeping, as well as from a um, tax standpoint. Uh, we think it will have a major impact on how tax returns are um, both um, uh, prepared as well as how they are audited um, by, the, by, the, by the IRS. So um, we're very interested in blockchain. Um, our members are very um, progressive. Uh, CPA, CPA network is not a real progressive <laughs> group of people to begin with, um, but our network is. And so we're, um, we're, rapidly, we're rapidly growing. We expect to have um, 500 uh, firms um, within a, a couple of years. We've grown very, very quickly. So um, we're really looking for, I mean, I'm so pleased to be invited to this group. I, first of all, I'm an old guy. And second of all, I'm a CPA. So um, I have two strikes against me, I think, when it comes to blockchain. But um, we're, you know, it's it's great to to see what's going on in the space and to meet people who are really truly in the space. We are actually developing our own software um, because we think that software will be the next big leap for our profession, and that it'll provide an enormous amount of tools um, for the CPA. And the CPA will no longer be a reporting unit they're more likely to be an advisory unit, which is what the CPA firm should, should have been doing all along. Um, but that's, that's really what, that's our interest in it. We do serve, um, we do, we also are B2C. So we um, serve a lot of entrepreneurs and investors, of course, our network members serve a lot of entrepreneurs and investors. So um, how they serve those entrepreneurs and investors, I think is gonna change. Um, and I think it's got the combination of blockchain with AI um, it's that combination that I think is going to be um, most critical for us. Really move the needle. Tom, Absolutely. Thank you for Tom. sharing that. I'm actually yeah. a big fan and I, and I listened to your podcast. I've probably listened to it. Oh, every thank you. Podcast. And uh, thank I was you so introduced much. to you through Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And right. you're very humble because uh, I know you have quite a following. And so is there anything that we can help you with in the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency? Yeah, what, what we're going to really need is we're actually going to need um, development help. Um, because okay. we 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 will be developing. Um, we, we're not letting we're not waiting for other people to do this. So we will need some development help on the on the actual develop you know development of software development side. So thank you for that. Got it. Absolutely. Well, no what a what a dignitary. Who would have thunk it that a CPA could go to climb to such heights, right? <laughs> of popularity. But you're definitely a people person, and I commend you for that as well. And uh, also being a visionary by adapting to this and adopting it. So. Well, I appreciate it, and thanks so much for inviting me. It's a, it's an auspicious group of um, uh, amazing people so far, and just amazing to to watch and listen. So thank you. Well, we, we we like having you. That's for sure. Okay, Adele, who's next on our Hollywood Squares here? We got to go with the guy with the DNA background, Daniel. Or, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your last name right, Daniel or Orb. Yes, that's that's fine. Uh, can Daniel, can you hear me well? Yeah. You're, yeah, Daniel, you you Robbie, right? Yes, it's it's Uribe because it's in in Spanish, but you, there's uh, uh, a lot of ways to pronounce it in English, so it, it's okay either ways. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Very honored. Um, it's uh, I'm happy to, to say hello to, to Professor Jim. I've already met him or uh, interacted with him in the Blockchain Association, uh, British Blockchain Association. Uh, Adi, thank you for inviting me. Uh, Will, thank you for having me. And the rest of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor to be here. So I don't want to take uh, a lot of your time. I'm in a very similar space as Binay Gupta, which uh, is also one of my my heroes in the blockchain space, um, but uh, it's very simple. We, we, we are like the, the DNS service in the blockchain for uh, human biosamples. Mm. So wow. we, we just uh, received a, a prize, um, uh, an award from the blockchain, British Blockchain Association 
for our biosample permission token. So we use ERC721 standard to allow people to uh, issue permits on the use of their DNA uh, and their mm. DNA information. So we, we uh, kind of uh, track the, uh, the biospecimen and also the data or the corresponding data. So in the end, we, we tokenize or we make a non-fungible token, um, the, the, the samples, and uh, we, we, we use the blockchain as a public notary service for, you know, uh, uh, stamping people's will about their, what, what uh, companies or laboratories or researchers can do with their data. So it's a revocable uh, token. So it's aligned with the GDPR. It's aligned with the California Consumer Privacy Act. So we call it uh, privacy in smart contracts for DNA data. Uh, but at, at the end, it's very similar of what uh, Binet was uh, uh, describing of, you know, uh, it's about provenance, it's about uh, transparency, it's about authenticity of data. Um, and in the other hand, for researchers, our promise or our business model is to protect them or to indemnify them against uh, data privacy claims. Mm. So if you use our platform as a researcher and you uh, post uh, or request data or samples, um, just because you're very transparent and uh, you uh, acknowledge that the data and the samples will be owned and controlled by each of the participants, then we will indemnify you against any any claim. Wow. So, um, so thank you for having us. And the, the ask, if I may. Yes, please. Thank you. I mean, just to learn, and we are very interested on participating in any uh, committee of regulations or regulatory because we are more like a legal tech kind of company. We want to uh, use smart contracts to put all the privacy. Uh, policies there and mm. let, let's make tokens uh, represent uh, people's will for their personal data so those times so that, that would be the ask number two and the, the two the, sorry the ask number two would be uh, we have a reg D open uh, so we're looking also to close our round uh, if somebody uh, is in the space of, of uh, or know some uh, potential investors uh, that would like to hear more about us, uh, that would be super good for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, glad to have you, Daniel. Thanks. How much do you have left of your Reg D, I have to ask? Uh, thank you very much. It's it's a small one. It's a 500K, and we are uh, still with uh, 285K. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing. Very impressive. Very thank interesting. Yeah, the, for... Even to a lot of people, I'm sure. Right, Jim? Yeah, so Daniel, if they're for everyone, um, on Fridays from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, there's a group that meets up to discuss blockchains in DC. And there's cool. some regulators there, there's some um, practitioners, uh, and there's, you know, one or two professors. So it's a working group. So if you guys want to get plugged into the DC scene, just let me know. The guy who runs it is Sandy Varsky. You just have to say, hey, could you invite me and he'll invite you. And then if you have a really interesting thing, maybe you pitch it for 15 minutes at the beginning of the meeting and then people talk about sort of their projects they're working on. So please reach out. I'm gonna leave my um, information in the chat. Feel free to contact me, but great job guys. All right. Yeah, thanks, know, thanks, thanks for coming, Jim. Of course. Appreciate it. Thank and uh, let's keep moving here, Adele. We're down to a couple of minutes actually, or a minute or two. So I wanna sir, sir. be respectful of everybody's time and keep it moving. We got, uh, hold on, everyone's starting to leave, so give me a second. David Kunz, the man. Yeah, the Dave, I was wondering where you were. Where hey, are guys. you, brother? I'm doing good. I'm doing well, good. This, is, this is real quick. This is uh, Dave Kuntz, and I've partnered up with him over many years. He's a top investment banker in New York. He's uh, worked with SoFi, the founder of SoFi, and many other institutions uh, for capital raising, as well as uh, advising in the digital space and many other spaces. So I'll let him talk about himself. He's also a GP and a very uh, cutting edge uh, 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 operating business, uh, operating business uh, think tank and accelerator called Hall Labs and Hall Fund. I encourage everybody to check it out. It's really cutting edge stuff, but 
Dave, why don't you take it away here in our last couple of minutes? And yeah, I'll I'll, I'll keep it brief. And and thanks, Will and uh, Adil and uh, you know Jeffrey and, and everyone from Crowd Create um, for putting this together. It was uh, it was great. And you know I uh, have had exposure to blockchain um, various points throughout my career. But as Will said, you know I've uh, heavy focus on uh, on the broker dealer side, banking, M and A, um, and you know start spent first 15 years in the public space, but have spent kind of the last five plus working directly with family offices. Um, and so if there's there's one person on the uh, on the panel here that raises capital, um, I spend most of my day doing that and um, and I enjoy it. So if, if anyone needs you know help or direction, um, I'm happy to uh, to provide that. And then you know just to to kind of get back to some of the projects that others were working on, um, you know, I, uh, some of you may know Mike Cagney. Um, Mike was the CEO of, uh, of SoFi, as, uh, as Will had said, and he now runs Figure. Um, and Figure was his brainchild along with his wife, um, who uh, I believe has 11 patents right now um, on the blockchain. And they started with Title. So, um, and they moved Title from something that used to take 10 days to two weeks down to under 24 hours. So, um, it's pretty impressive what they've been able to do, and they're obviously going to move out to uh, to different verticals. But wanted to prove out one first, um, and that's uh, that's gone really well. And um, also worked uh, within the blockchain and healthcare. So it sounds like uh, a couple of us might be uh, might make sense to get together, Daniel, or uh, or talk because um, I'm advising a company that. Um, CEO had worked at McKenzie for a long time with uh, with Big Pharma, and she has kind of democratized uh, Big Pharma to um, utilize the uh, the blockchain to share in trial data, uh, which would be the first time that that's ever happened before. Um, mm. And so, for purposes of recruitment, so faster recruitment, but also being able to um, share results to be able to. Um, get to statistically significant size faster. Um, so, and um, the CEO, she's amazing. She's here in New York. So, um, you know, I think if you're doing anything around healthcare, um, I should get you guys together for sure. Um, and then on the finance side, uh, as Will said, I'm a GP in a uh, growth venture fund. Um, and then spend the other half of my time helping family offices source and syndicate um, each other's deals. So, um, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Um, was pretty fast, and have uh, have worked with Crowd Create. Um, I think we're on our fifth deal together. So um, I can't say enough about these guys. So not only you know do they bring great people together in a format like this, but I can tell you from a support standpoint, um, whether it's PR, marketing, um, they have an act for something that not a lot of people do. Um, and more importantly, you know they don't just talk about it; they're executors. They get things done. So um it's uh it's been a pleasure to uh to work with them mm -hmm. well thanks dave that's great and i appreciate you coming on and 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 once again i've worked for quite a while with dave and his contacts are enormous he put together like you said a, a a company with over 400 family offices and he's still the lead shareholder in that uh, growth uh, platform for lack of a better word and as we're integrating all sorts of new capital sources and new capital sources are hungry for education and trust, right? Which is what everything is built on to go forward, whether it's from a capital standpoint or a strategic partnership standpoint, that's where- well, I, sold my, uh, I sold my ATS, my QMS and my QB to, uh, you know, to someone about five years ago who was looking to, uh, you know, to utilize that. So that was, uh, I had my own, my own BD as well. So I'm fully, uh, I'm fully registered with the SEC um, as well. So that oh, that's, helps. that's great. <laughs> no, that's great, Dave. So we're who else? I think he is he the last one, Adele. No. I don't want to miss anybody. No, we got Dimitri Churin next. We got quite a bit of Dimitri Churin from the Okay, US. well, we'll oh. keep going. I just want to let everybody know we're a little bit over here and hopefully uh, you're certainly welcome. We're going to have a little bit of a communication afterwards, but at the same time, we want to get to everybody. So if you have to go, we understand, but we're going to certainly thread everybody up and we're looking forward to our next one in about two weeks that will continue this series. So we want to welcome you all back then as well. So go ahead, uh, Adele, announce our next uh, contestant here. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello, yeah, everyone. 
Yeah, thank you. I do like Will and Jeffrey like to make it. It's really like great crowd, like uh, even though like some of the people. Um, so I'm mostly from the other side. I'm from technology side. My background is cryptography and uh, I'm in New York. I'm advisor to IBM Columbia Accelerator and I'm also like working with US Gold. Uh, it's uh, Wyoming Corporation, MSB license and uh, it's usually token that is backed by the gold and comparing to let's say uh, Paxos gold so like tether gold it's currency because one USG it's like one American eagle one owns like gold coin and it's at 50 bucks so it means that in US it's like currency and what we're planning to do is like to also uh, launching RI approved by FINRA to manage and custody crypto investment and also we'll be launching like USG individual uh, retirement accounts program. And next year also plans to apply for the special purpose depository institute in Wyoming. Excellent, Dimitri, excellent. Is this kind of a competitor to, Pat, to the PAX coin and coming out of London that's been pretty popular and well received or is, is there Yeah, it's different like your space there? because US gold is currency. It's it's more like this use case when, when it's currency, uh, then you have some like advantages uh, to run it. Okay, yeah. great. Plus well, is also the, the goal for US Gold like is to have also own like uh, bank. In right. Okay. Yeah. What can we help? What can we help you with? What are your what are your needs or most uh, important requests right now that you're working on? Yeah, I, I have like many heads for US Gold. It's more right now, uh, it's not like it's self-funded corporation and mostly all the proceeds are from the sale of the gold. It's not investment advice and uh, like management. I'm a like technology guy. I'm the person who is like delivering uh, mostly like technological apparatus. Uh, but uh, right now, like I think like they're raising for the part related to the bank. Okay. Yeah, okay. but uh, yeah. Uh, I, I can like why like if somebody interested in, in this like venture, but my background most like technology. I came from video gaming. I was VP for our gaming. It's like AAA video gaming size, and I have like video gaming studio. I still like advise a couple of blockchain gaming project because for me blockchain is more about game without UI. Yeah. 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 Well, gaming and gaming and tokenization and blockchain fit very well together. So it's a it's a, a combination. That's great. Nice to have you, and, and uh, thanks for attending. Next so, Adele, who's our next uh, guest? We got a few people that haven't showed their face, so we got to go with Pat Doyle. Okay, Pat, uh, can you step forward and claim? Yeah, your hey, prize? hey there. Sorry about that. I didn't want to make all you guys look at me for that long, so <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd spare you a bit. Um, hey, everyone, nice to meet everyone, and like be in a room with a lot of heavy hitters. Um, so, yeah, my name is Pat Doyle. I run a company called Genesis Volatility. Um, what we do is build trading software and analytics for specifically for crypto options. Mm. Um, so the derivative space is growing faster than pretty much any trading product in the crypto space. And there's a, kind of a lack of proper professional analytics for institutions to really feel comfortable trading these assets. Um, and so uh, myself and my co-founder built Genesis Volatility. Uh, we started back in January. My background is in technology, um, so I ran a team of data scientists at a blockchain analytics company prior to starting this company. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we had just we'd launched our, our product back in March. We've been getting a ton of traction. Um, we also focus a lot on the, the DeFi options that are growing, so kind of the yeah. decentralized finance world. The, the kind of newest product that we see a lot of traction on not a ton of traction, but it's growing for sure is DeFi options. Um, so kind of bringing a, a more professional approach to how you trade these based on analytics um, is kind of, is kind of what we're doing. So again, like from the technology, my partner is, is the trader. I'm more so on the technology and smart contract side. And, and that's kind of what we've been uh, focusing on and building uh, for the last eight months. Um, so oh, yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's that's kind of my background, my the company that we're building. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a really interesting space, and it's been growing really quickly. Pat, what is your you know, Pat, what's your profile of 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 your current institutional uh, 
clients that you've built over the last year, I guess you'd say. If, you know, I don't need any names. I know they're proprietary most yeah. of the time, but we'd love to, I'd love to know something about the profile. Yeah, so it's it's interesting because crypto has a, in the trading community, it's very retail focused. Um, when you get into derivatives, you start to expand more into some of the institutional players. So we find that there's the, the trading audience that we we focus on is kind of split between professional individual trader and like large organizations. So some of the early companies that started work that started using our platforms would be like um, Galaxy Digital, Block Tower, some of those users had gotten on and signed up and used our stuff early. That was kind of more on the institutional side, but we do have plenty of individual kind of uh, professional options traders as well. Oh, that's awesome. great. Hey, mm -hmm. who, who do you want to get connected to both. Uh, in the space specific? Last mastermind we had on Alex Mashinsky with Celsius. And we've oh, been, no way. Yeah, for the last uh, two years. And uh, it was great. But I mean, who, who would be influential for your business to get? Yeah, I, th I think anybody that's got connections to traders, really. I mean, we just want to talk to anybody that's trading derivatives or interested in, in exploring crypto derivatives specifically, whether that's DeFi options or kind of your regular listed centralized options. Yeah, Pat, I, I ran three different desks um, on the uh, on the sell side. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to, you know, to help whenever I can. It's Dave Coons, by the way. Oh, OK. I was looking for the I was looking for the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dave, that would be great. My, I would love my, to my name was lit up. Here I am. Um, there you go. I knew but, he hit your hot, I knew he hit your hot button, Dave, as soon as he came on. So yeah, so ahead. if 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 I can help you, feel free to reach out. We can uh, we can exchange, uh, you know, roll yeah. and see if there's a, uh, you know, if there's any way I can help out. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome, Pat. Glad to have you be part of the team and group. And I know you're going to find some very good resources already. Like I've used Dave Coons for many things, many resources over the years. So. Thanks a lot. Sure, for that's me. just one of many. I think we have our last person who has in, who has had this video set off, Matt Nicosia. All right, Matt, you made it. Where are you, brother? Well, I did make it, so let me see if I can get you a video. <laughs> oh no, no, there, there he is. Way there up in Salt, Salt Lake in the rarefied air. So, <laughs> this is Matt Nicosia, and he's the uh, founder of T7X platform, a new exchange platform. Is also a very prolific investment banker, and he's taken hundreds of companies public on the NASDAQ and IPO. So he has a lot of experience on both the traditional security side and on the digital side. And I'm very excited. We're working with some current brands and pro projects with him uh, over there at Scepter Cash, Scepter uh, Brands, and certainly T7X, an exchange that you're going to hear a lot more about in the coming coming days and weeks. So Matt, take it away and excited well, uh, to have you. Thanks, Will, appreciate it. Uh, obviously our background and our team, we're, we're main, mainly I would call an investment fund. We've done multiple companies. I see this as a new trend. My first, I'll call first big win was, first big win was 1996 when we're do, we were doing internet companies. And I see blockchain as another adaptation to what we saw as back then we were teaching everyone to how to adapt to internet, we see blockchain uh, as a way to adapt to transfer of assets and do us doing so through a trusted worldwide scenario, hence you know, T7X, a trusted worldwide exchange. What we do specialties in is we build assets. We build real, whether it be real estate, whether it be precious metals, whether it be brands, companies, technologies, drugs, we're very diverse. And then we take them to an exit, whether it be through an equities market or other things. Uh, we focused a lot recently on what I consider the next revolution will be when everyone throughout the world has a chance to participate in passive income. Yes, there's a lot of barriers domestically in the United States, but we see as the whole world eventually opens up to the ability to participate in wealth creation, it's going to be a very exciting time. Uh, hence why we built uh, you know, T7X for that main reason. And we've, we're, we've also built a private equity fund, uh, 3, 3SN. It's an impact fund, which all of our impact investments focus on things that would be a part of the SDG side. But one of the big issues in the U, in the, that the UN has pushed is digitization of assets and mainly capital movement in third world countries. And we see they and we see blockchain as part of that key piece. So we're focusing uh, with 3SN our, our, as our venture fund, 
all of our assets, their exit is through whether it be tokenization or a combination of an equity market. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of things that we see happening, uh, which are going to be very interesting, whether it be an ownership and a brand to being able to own a small, we'll call it fractional piece of a paying real estate, no matter where it might be to ownership of a, of a gold bar or gold coin. And you know, we're, we're heavily, heavily involved in investing strategically in those markets but mainly in bringing not just the technology, but the assets that people will then see in the digitization market. Uh, I, rem I remember when most of the companies in 1996, 97 were pitching, you know, internet software te technology pieces. Yes, we did that and we did very well, but the transition went to how do you then take the real world and apply it to that world? We see the same thing happening here, which is why our focus is not just on the software side, which we think is, which we think is vital, uh, Jonathan Johnson's a good friend of mine, so we know a lot what they've done over at over at uh, you know at Medici. There's a lot of things that are going to push that realm, and we encourage everyone to continue that realm. That's necessary, but we see the long-term assets are when there are the assets that can then be, reside on the digital world that can then be that we'll call it that integration of digitization. That's what we're going to focus on. Uh, but pleased to be here and. Both uh, Jeff, Ivan, and Will are very great, uh, capable people, and looking forward to continue to work with them further. That's great, Matt. Thank you. And and you know, I've really enjoyed being and working with Matt, uh, short and long term, because he does come from such a traditional world, securities world, like I do. And you know, he's working with some very profitable brands, recognizable name brands right now, as well as hard assets from around the world. Uh, along with launching his own exchange or the group's exchange uh, to really control uh, the marketing and, and have a, a lot of a, a clean slate, so to speak, for so many things, so many products, so many services, so many assets that don't get the proper support and certainly um, the, to, to be able to sustain that support because of the problems that we've all that have been in around the securities world, traditional securities exchanges and worlds have suffered with and and understand the the, uh, the the shortfall, let's put it that way, of those services. And that's why SPACs, SPACs, and other things are uh, launching and trying to conserve money and get a, a shorter uh, trajectory into liquidity and, and exposure. But Matt's really coming from both worlds. He's an excellent uh, resource, and we're certainly glad to have you, Matt, and can't wait to hear more about T7X and other other projects you're working on so thanks will yeah thanks for being a part of this and like i say we're gonna probably announce a date two weeks from now to do our second one here we'd love for all of you to come back and share more even if you have some people you'd like to invite that you think are uh would have something to contribute both on the educational side as well as cutting edge deal side and certainly the investor side as well uh, we'd love to have them and, and keep that going. We'll certainly thread everybody up. So right now I'm going to turn it back. Jeff, is there any last words you'd like to say to close us up here or anything you'd like to add? No, I, I, I'm excited about, uh, you know, just things going virtual. I know there's people from all parts of the world here. And, uh, you know, if anything, if we can be a resource of connecting you and hope to see you all in real life, you know, once these conferences and events uh, kick back up. But thanks everyone for attending. Well, I want to thank my co-host Adele Alley. He put a lot of hard work into this and inviting everybody and getting the format going and all that. So great job, Adele. This is his first one. I'm gonna give him a quick little applause. And thank uh, you. again, want to thank everybody for participating. Uh, you know, if you want to hang around for a few minutes, you can. We can stay on and chat. But uh, certainly going to look forward to seeing you on our next episode and keeping yeah, yeah. this momentum going. Uh, and I would like to also thank you guys for joining. I learned a lot from law when it comes with Harriet to Dina to also some of the professors like Jamil and everyone, to some of the investors as well, like uh, Paul, uh, Matt Nikasika, Net Nikasia, David Tunz, and helping uh, Dimitri, Daniel meet Vinay Gupta as hero as well. That was pretty amazing. So I really appreciate that. Well, I second so the motion, Adele. Gross. We had an amazing, amazing cast, except for that Vinay character who scared a lot of people away. I thought we'd have a lot more, but I think when they saw him on there and said he's the next uh, Star Wars guy or something, but I'm teasing Vinay. Thanks for attending. Any last words from you before we sign off here? 
Yeah, just, uh, right. oh, That's great. Go, oh, Harriet. Harriet, no, you're the you're the uh, you're the attorney. Anything you want to add or say goodbye with? Uh, apologies for interrupting. I was just going to say thank you for the invite. It's been really interesting, and I hope to speak to some of you soon. Well, we want to stay connected with you too here, so we can kind of keep our ear to the ground on on different initiatives that are happening from your point of view. I would love to have that opportunity, and a lot of the group would too. So that's great that you're you're willing to share that with us. Thank you very much. Impressive. Yeah. Remarkably high-powered room. Really oh man, impressive. was it ever, Vinay? Um, yeah, I'll try and get the guys along from Bermuda next time. Uh, I work pretty closely with government of Bermuda, and I think that their um, fintech advisory people would be super interested in participating. Love it. Love to have it. Love to have them and, and, and learn more. Like I say, the bigger expansion and the more we can all support each other with resources and ideas and and other uh, initiatives, the, the faster and more cleaner and sustainable this is all going to go. So, mm -hmm. and the best is yet to come, right? As uh, yeah. I guess it was Frank Sinatra is saying that. But regardless, yeah. the best is yet to come. So yeah, thanks, I know that this thank everybody. Stuff, and, uh, we'll stay threaded up and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks, if not sooner. Great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, nice work. Nice work. Thank you.